I'm here with my colleague Annette Cosgrove, um, who's also part of the Digital Ed uh, Knowledge Platform that we've created for the CUA. And we're just going to share some insights with you. Um, there is, a, I suppose, a bigger research piece that's going on in the background. There is an action research study that's been established around this whole platform that we've developed since 2019. So we'll just take you through some examples and some key kind of initiatives that are kind of driving digital transformation. And for our new technological university that's emerging and um, with uh, our colleagues in IT Sligo and Letter Kenny IT from the 1st of April. So you may have heard we're about to become the Atlantic Technological University. And, um, you know, what we've developed, and with, this is part of the I Know project, one of the HEA innovation funded projects back in 2019. We're, um, uh, we're delighted with what's been achieved. And I suppose we were very fortunate that we had started this whole digital teaching and learning uh, transformation phase pre-COVID. Little did we know what was coming down the line, and um, but there's been some key learnings and some key initiatives that we're sharing with you today. Um, so I suppose to start off, if you're not familiar, you can go into the digitaled.ie platform. And as I said uh, before, you know, it is available through Creative Commons and there's lots you know, there's a treasure uh, chest of various different resources and um, a discovery, um, uh, I suppose, a discovery tool is there, but it is accessible to our, our colleagues across the CUA, but there is opportunities for you to access that through licensing through JISC. But there's so much more in there uh, that you can explore, and we, we can talk about that in uh, as we over the next 10 minutes. OK, so um, there's kind of four key steps that we guide colleagues through, and this is something that has come through from our own engagement and focus groups and uh, surveys that we've ran with colleagues who've been engaging with the platform over the last couple of years and making it clear, I suppose, that there's four steps to engagement. And this has really helped with um, colleagues' own self-discovery um, pathway and how they're engaging with developing their digital capabilities uh, during COVID. So, as I said, there's a step one where that you discover your digital capabilities and you look for an opportunity to improve those skills and you get a mapping kind of report from that experience. Then you join the digital ed community and we we'll share those insights as to where um, uh, where there's been opportunities to join the community and develop your skills and then looking at resources and so forth. So. To begin, and I suppose this will map out for you. I, I love this drawing. It was completed actually last year by um, a graphic harvester who I, I heard about through actually Lisa and Tom through a conference that was ran last year um, um, for the sector. And we were fortunate to meet up with Maya and she came along to our digital ed conference last year and uh, produced this kind of map of our journey. And it's been particularly useful for us because it's kind of mapping out the timeline as well of the research journey we've been taking in the development of digital ed. And the timeline begins over where it says start here and where we started the process. Um, there's been a lot of data generated through digital capability workshops and that baseline data was very useful for us. We went across the eight campuses in the CUA and got, formed a picture as to where, where our strengths, where our weaknesses were, where perhaps there were gaps. And it pointed us to, I suppose, the development of a, a level nine um, digital teaching and learning program, which we developed with um, my colleague who's on the call here as well, Annette Cosgrove. We also learned a lot through the index survey. Again, it was pre-COVID, but it's been very useful. Um, we then began to embark on getting colleagues to engage with the digital discovery tool. So you'll see that as we moved along, we began to find out, you know, and through a dashboard that was available, and I'll show you that in a moment, um, it gave us an insight as to how, I suppose, our strengths again and where we were proficient in relation to digital skills. And then all during that phase, that was all feeding into the development of this platform. So the platform that you can see, digitaled.ie, was informed by those outputs, the research, the index survey, and the, and, uh, the initial engagement with the discovery tool through the pilot phase. We then embarked on building this community and uh, the community has been key. And we set about uh, identifying champions um, who would step forward and, and get trained as digital champions um, uh, for the CUA representing 
uh, across the various different campus. And little did we know how important they would play and the role they would play, those champions, in that kind of peer learning and collaborative in, you know, engagement um, of digital tools and technologies as we embarked on this whole online teaching. Little did we know how quickly it was going to come for our colleagues. So, so all of that helped. We had all those building blocks and the foundation in the early days to support that. So we have been reviewing the platform. And as I said, we went through focus groups and surveys back in, um, in 2020, and it informs the kind of look and feel of you see the digital platform it is today. There's further research underway to, to do a final review of that. Um, so I suppose some of the key areas, I think your mic is on there, Brian. Is your mic on? Is it? I'm sorry, I'm just getting a bit of feedback there. Maybe it's not you. Um, so in the digital ed community, some of the key areas that we've been able to pinpoint where colleagues have come back to us and noted around, you know, what are the key engagement points of joining the community and the opportunities to kind of share stories within the digital ed blog forum. There's been a series of workshops that are delivered online on a monthly basis as a program that's made available across the CUA. And uh, that's been particularly useful. There's been an opportunity to kind of tap into key uh, research papers that we've presented on the platform that are curated and um, uh, we've identified across the sector. They've come from probably people on, who are on this call, but across, across, the, um, uh, across the higher education sector, we've identified some kind of some key papers that have helped with that journey. We've also looked at um, some key resources around online teaching and uh, guidance around student engagement. So all of that's been particularly um, useful. And I suppose one of the key highlights for us this year that has brought together, and you can look at this yourself in your own time, it's, it's accessible, is the Digital Ed Book. It's brought together the community of practitioners who've engaged with the Digital Ed platform and the associated innovation projects that we funded um, um, through this whole theme of digital education. They have had this opportunity just last year, 2021, to, uh, to write a case study and to showcase that. And we had, a, I suppose, a launch and a celebration event around those examples of excellence in where um, um, digital teaching and learning has played an important role for, for in their practice and engaging students. And all of the cases actually are linked to practice and developments that have all happened during the pandemic. And um, so, so this is a nice dissemination piece that we've had to, and, and there is more to come. Uh, later this year as we kind of wrap up the INO project and embed the digital ed platform as a, I suppose, as a training and CPT resource for, for colleagues, uh, for not just academic and professional development colleagues as well. So, um, so these are some of the key themes you'll see, and I won't go into them, but you'll have an opportunity to go in and there's a little video that introduces each of the, uh, the themes and the cases and um, there's such a broad range, um, like looking at employability and how we developed a careers module for the Institute to replace, um, I suppose, uh, traditional placement and work-based learning opportunities. And, and so that has been very, very useful, just one example. Also universal design for learning, some excellent work that's happened uh, in IT Sligo, and uh, we've all benefit, benefited from that as well. Another key initiative, a standout initiative that has come through that has been a win-win for our colleagues and uh, where we've delivered 500 to date um, since launching the digital ed platform. This was an associated spin-off service that came from it, Ask Me Anything, and our learning technologist team in uh, Galway have led out on that and they've been delivering one-to-one 15-minute -one clinics to the academic community and uh, this whole area of online and blended delivery. And you'll see a lovely blog or article uh, that's been put together by the technology team. You can click on that and they'll tell you all about it as well. And there's also a case study in our book. So that's been really um, useful. Another tool that's kind of a standout tool that's been helping with transformation is we adapted the Oscar um, uh, course design review card um, in the last uh, couple of years in GMIT as a result of our, our partnership and our uh, collaborations with SUNY in the States. 
Um, SUNY is U New York State University. Um, and they were very useful in guiding us in the early days as we developed the digital ed platform. But this has been one of the kind of standout services or scorecard, I should say. I know we've shared it with colleagues in DCU as well. And um, Orna, I think, has used it as well with colleagues. And uh, it's been really, really useful. We've adapted it with, as a traffic light system. And it's really helped kind of frame people's uh, or academics design thinking approaches around um, the VLE and what a, a nice checklist to check off. Am I on the right track and what features do I need to consider when I'm designing my programs for online and flexible delivery? And then um, I, I'm not, I'm not going to have time for this, but if you do have time, you'll have menti.com. Please, I'd love to hear what kind of, there's such a variety of examples. And it's great to hear Catherine this morning chatting about all the variety of work that's going on in UCC. Very, very similar activities. And, you know, it, it would be lovely to hear if you do get a chance over the next 20 minutes, just log into menti.com, use this code 65. I'll put it in the chat in a minute. And we'd love to hear uh, what you've been doing um, in relation to teaching and learning. Um, we have, as I said, um, I'm not going to go through this because I won't have time. I'm just conscious of the time here, Brian. Um, I did mention the discovery tool. This gives you an insight as to what we learn from engagement of the discovery tool. And we get a really interesting dashboard, um, which gives us a picture across the disciplines how uh, people are developing in this space. So we're about to do another rollout of this um, this year as we wrap up and look at the dissemination of the work that's coming through from digital ed, so that'll be useful. On the community side, I want Annette to just say something about our champions. So this champion network that is still uh, building all the time, we have about 40 colleagues that have gone through the kind of formal digital champion training program and Annette has been working with 40 colleagues across the CUA that have engaged with this level nine pathway. And it's been powerful, it's impact. And Annette, you might say something about, are you there? Yes, <laughs> thank you, Karina. <laughs> um, yeah, no. Thank you, Karina. Um, yes, so I've been involved with the digital project and part of um, that was working with the digital champion. So really, it was really, I suppose, an excellent um, source of guidance for their um, colleagues. So, uh, the model, I suppose, that we had to use, I know Karina explained a little bit there, but essentially there was an expert identified in each of the departments. So really, it really helped. Um, our, some of our lecturers had never, as, as um, Catherine mentioned and different people mentioned, they'd never thought online before. So uh, this um, I said, model was really, really beneficial um, throughout the um, pandemic. Um, so how they how it worked was, I suppose, they encouraged colleagues and also they shared some exemplary teaching practice, you know. So um, some of them had completed um, technology enhanced learning, some of the um, modules that we did. But we also, Karina mentioned, we developed a new module as part of this. Now, Catherine, um, in her um, keynote earlier, mentioned that, you know, how do you give them accreditation for some of the what they've done? So that's what we have done is we've taken their good examples and we've, get, we've um, allowed them to embed it in their assessment and as part of um, uh, Level 9 Digital Teaching and Learning module. OK, so just some of the examples, I suppose, just when people say, sorry, now the dog is barking there as I'm speaking. Um, so some of the um, examples um, that you would say, well, what technologies um, did they use or what? So uh, part of was, you know, how do you engage the students? How do you get them to learn a little bit better? So um, we used they used extensive um, H5P integration. So, again, uh, part of the TLO provided great guidance on that. Uh, they used podcasts. Oh, sorry. 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 Um, teams for teams as a learning and a discussion, um, you know, not just for delivery. Um, uh, Karina mentioned we use teams for delivery, but also as a discussion for, um, for, for them to engage with each other as well. So to give them, you know, some sense of community. Um, another great example, one of our um, digital uh, champions used was OneNote for teaching computing and maths. So again, whilst we took all of these initiatives and shared, shared them in the wider community. So just some examples, Karina is on the screen there, is right across the schools from um, culinary arts to uh, her blockchain mentioned earlier, to podcasts, digital badges were used extensively to motivate um, the students. Um, a lot of the business um, school, some examples there, um, use of Flipgrid, Mintimeter to engage our students. So again, really what the academic champions did, they showed really good practice they gave sessions, worked with um, the TLO office, and they embedded themselves within the community. And they were you know, hugely, it was a hugely successful program and continues to be so. And the output at the end 
they complete it, um, um, uh, digital teaching and learning um, accreditation. You know, so uh, that's something that really all of their work um, it didn't go to waste and they got formal accreditation. I know that was mentioned earlier on. Uh, so we've developed this new digital teaching and learning and we continue uh, to run that. And there's been great demand for it right across um, our new um, university. So thanks, Karina. Thanks, Annette. Um, and I think that's probably, I, I just, it's one of our key initiatives that we can point to that has brought a network together um, where colleagues are learning and sharing together. And I think the book, was a great platform for some of the champions to showcase what they have, I suppose, developed within their practice and how it's been transformative um, in, in their program delivery. So another piece just to finish off, because I'm, I'm just conscious of the time, we just launched a digital badge scheme, a digital badge scheme as well, not just for the academic pathway, um, but also for the professional services pathway. So that's been rolled out at the moment um, across the CUA. A great uptake. Um, we were conscious as part of you know this project for iNote and for building the digital ed platform that we wanted to do to do something for the professional services network across um, across all the uh, the colleges and giving them an opportunity to develop digital skills and get recognition and becoming champions within their own uh, functional areas. And um, so that so that has taken off. And if I just skip forward to just give you an insight into the professional services badge. Um, it's, I suppose there's four levels to it. Ultimately, you're working towards the professional services digital champion recognition. There's three stages within the badge, uh, the explorer, the adventurer, and the navigator. Colleagues um, uh, that have been leading out on this project within digital ed are Jessica Duffy and Orla Skehel, uh, based in GMIT, and then they're collaborating with colleagues in Sligo and Letterkenny um, on the rollout of this. So there's been great uptake. Even our own president, Dr. Orla Flynn in, uh, in Galway, um, she has started the journey and she is going to be the first, I think, executive uh, board member that will complete it. And again, what, what's it doing in the learning pathways? They're exploring some of the work that has come through, some of the great badge work. If we go back to the All Aboard project that was... Um, led out in NUI Galway. I know, I think Sharon Flynn was involved with that and also Ian McLaren a number of years ago. We've embedded some of those badges. We have some uh, kind of open learning opportunities where they can do some courses in Coursera. Ultimately, they're working towards these Microsoft badges. They do three or four of them. They also do something around GDPR. And the key to gain the badge and uh, within the professional services pathway is there's a skill sharing um, exercise or activity that's required um, and evidence of that needs to be demonstrated in order to claim your badge. So, so that's working well. And we're, we, as I said, we piloted it last year, learned a lot from that experience. And now that's uh, where we are today is rolling it out. And we're going to be finishing up in, um, well, not finishing up, Digital Ed would still be alive and well, but I suppose we're doing a kind of a showcase conference in the first week in May. You're all very welcome. I'll be communicating through Gavin, the president of ILTA, to share details about it. Um, and it will showcase lots of evidence and practice. And in particular as well, we, we are going to look at the professional services badge engagement as well as the academic uh, digital development pay, phase. And then that's it, I think, to finish off, because I, I think there's not, not enough time. There's loads of resources. Uh, please do have a look at Digital Ed. There's so much in there, as we mentioned, the book, which is our latest publication that has come through. There's a lot of really good curated resources under different headings, whether it's teaching and learning assessment or student engagement. Uh, we have a fantastic digital ed tools directory in there, a peer review process that was set up in looking at about a collection of about 30 digital tools. It's been reviewed all the time. We seek out champions and colleagues across the CUA 